Hey guys, Scott here again with Go Kart Masters Academy. Uh, we got a 300 XRS four seater uh, EFI in the shop today. And uh, we took this cart riding a couple weeks ago. And I want to come to you guys today and show you the things that we did like and also the things that we did not like about this cart. Uh, we want to be 100% honest with all of our customers and the people that buy things from us. Uh, but just a couple of things we didn't like, we want to share with that for you as well and uh, hopefully to make your buying process if you were to buy one of these carts uh, a little bit easier knowing what you can expect and out of it we did take it trail riding we do have a few videos uh, of this cart actually riding so we'll throw in some videos clips of that as well all right let's start off by talking just a little bit about this cart here uh, again it is a 300 model so that's a 300 cc engine uh, it is a liquid cooled and you can see your radiator uh, up here on the front uh, of the cart here it is a four seater as you can see and uh, i'll get in the back here just a minute and show you how an adult can fit in here and uh, so this is going to be the same uh, pretty much the same frame if you would the same look uh, as a 200 uh, two-seater and also our 300 two-seater as well and uh, but it is of course is extended here this cart here does come with a electronic dash on it it tells you your miles per hour it tells you your trip how many miles you have on it uh, it does come standard with uh, with side mirrors on it and uh, your horns uh, this S model here is just the uh, black steel wheels it does not have the aluminum wheels on it you can get a uh, upgraded wheels to put on it all right, I want to go ahead and, and, and talk about just a few things, a few problems uh, that we have uh, seen, a few problems that we heard of and that we did confirm for ourselves. And uh, the number one problem that people have uh, with this cart right here, uh, whether it be the four seater uh, or whether it be the two seater, is they say they have problems with it overheating. And especially when they first get it, uh, they have problems constantly with trying to, trying to get it uh, not to overheat after a while and uh, i'll be honest with you we we got this cart a couple months ago uh, we probably put 10 miles on it here around the shop and uh, just driving it up and down the road and driving it in the field behind the shop here and uh, we did not find any of those problems at all uh, with it overheating and a couple weeks ago we loaded up uh, we, we had an eight hour trip uh, down to lake of the ozarks and uh, we went trail riding at uh, one of the off-road parks there at Lake of the Ozarks. I'll put the link to that in the description below. We absolutely love the park. Uh, but as soon as we got this cart out on the trails, uh, it started overheating. And uh, we, we found the problem there and we found that it, it, it did start overheating. And uh, what, what I found on the trail, and of course we always take a bunch of tools with us. We, you know, we're really prepared or we try to be. And as I found that the fan was not kicking on uh, like I thought it should be on the radiator. So on the back of the radiator, you do have a, a fan that turns on uh, when the temperature gets uh, certain degrees. And uh, so what I done is I went back and uh, I got to, to the trailer and I got a couple uh, wire connectors and I hot wired the fan to run constantly. And I thought, well, that's going to fix it because the fan wasn't kicking on and uh, wasn't really thinking. And, uh, but I, I, hot, I hot wired the fan where it was running constantly, got back in the cart, got going a little bit longer, and it started overheating again to the point where it, it, would, it would shut off. It has a safety on it where it shuts off. And so we pulled it back to the trailer, put it on the trailer, and went riding the rest of the day with all the other carts that we had. Got it back to the shop here, got it back out, got it to overheat here again, all right? Long story short, let me tell you what I found the problem is. So uh, the problem is not the fan and uh, what the problem is, and let me kind of tell you a little bit of how, how this system works here. And so it is water cooled. And so uh, I'm not sure how well you can see all this, but uh, you have a, a black hose up here on top. This one that runs over the battery going up to the top that goes into your thermostat. And uh, you have a black hose down here at the bottom uh, right there. That is your water pump, right? It flows down. Uh, you got tubes that run underneath the frame here. They are in a protective casing underneath the bottom of the, the cart. Uh, you got some tubes there uh, that run the coolant, the coolant 
up through these middle bars on both sides. And so it runs up, it runs into the, the radiator, runs back out and goes back to the back. You also have a reservoir up here. All right, you have your temperature switch for your fan is on the bottom of the radiator. I'm not, you're not gonna be able to see it, but it's on the back side of the radiator here. So as that fluid is flowing, the temperature switch kicks on and says, hey, we need to turn the fan on, and it turns the fan on. Well, here's the problem. Our fan would never turn on. And uh, this is the problem, though, that there was air that was trapped in the lines. And that was the problem. That has been the problem that we have found with uh, people that have the overheating problem. It's not that the fan is not working. It's not that the fan switch is not working. Now, those things could fail, but the number one problem is the air that gets trapped in the lines. And we have a procedure that we, uh, we got a video, and we have a procedure of how to get that air out of the lines when you first uh, get your cart and uh, have make, make sure all the air is out of there and it's, it's pumping fluid like it should be. That's the number one, the number one problem that we found, which is uh, not really a problem uh, if you can get all the air out of the lines, which is, is just a simple process and to do, and so uh, there's bleeders on it to be able to do that, all right? Something else that we did not like about this cart here. There's two more things that I did not like about this cart, and uh, the first thing is this cart uh, is super noisy. It, it rattles a lot. So whenever you crank it up, and whenever you're hitting the gas, or when it's just sitting here idling, it rattles a lot. Sounds like there's a bunch of loose bolts and uh, everywhere. And uh, what we have found with this one is on all your seat belts, let's see if I can show you one here. On all your seat belts, bolts, uh, how they're mounted up, they're mounted up so you, they can swivel, right? Back and forth. Well, there's the rattling right there. And more so on this cart than the other carts that we have found because this bar that goes behind the driver's seat that attaches the driver's um, seat belts is right here. And it rattles really a lot whenever you are, you are uh, just idling or you're cruising around. So what we done here, and to stop it, and we, we got all the rattling out just about, of course, you still got the back seat belt bolts. Is we just took this uh, the seat belt off and put it on the other side of the bolt. That way, it wasn't moving back and forth, so it's not swinging back and forth the way that it's kind of originally designed there. Uh, another rattle that we had was in the exhaust. Uh, it come from I'm not sure if it comes from, from the factory like this or if we did it, but this bolt was stripped out and wasn't allowing the clamp to be tight, so it was rattling the exhaust. One other thing that I didn't like at first, but honestly, as soon as you get in the cart and you start driving it, it goes away. And I think you only notice it from going from model to model and sitting in different uh, models. So sitting in this model versus sitting in the 200. And uh, it's that um, the seat here is lifted up higher than it is in our 200 carts or our other air-cooled carts which in returns that puts the steering wheel uh, down in your lap a little bit more. And so I'm sitting here and uh, when I go from, from cart to cart, uh, it feels like the steering wheel's kind of sitting in my lap a little bit uh, more than the other carts. And honestly, as soon as you start driving it, especially if you're on a trail, uh, you're not gonna notice it because you're kinda, if you're, if you're really riding. Hey guys, I'm sitting here editing the video. Uh, I noticed that a little bit of the video clip cut out here, but uh, you're not going to notice the steering wheel sitting down in your lap as much, especially if you're on a trail. And because um, when you're on a, when you're trail riding, you're usually hugging the steering wheel anyways, and are really up on the gas and the and gas and the the brake there, and up on the steering wheel, and uh, all of it kind of goes away. And uh, you're not going to notice it as well if you're not sitting in from model to model or, or driving different different ones. And it's something that may be. Um, a deciding factor for you or maybe not and uh, I believe you can actually go if you were to look at how this it's designed behind the seat here I believe one could actually lower the seats back down to where it is on our 200 carts and be just fine and uh, for whatever reason this one's raised up just a tad all right so you heard about the several things that uh, we did not like we heard about the several things that we did not like and uh, the corrections one would be the seat belts 
uh, rattling. Another would be the driver's seat, how it's lifted up, and also uh, the problem with the overheating. And of course, that's just uh, making sure the air is out of the lines before you start it up and ride it there. All right, now that we've talked about those things, I do want to go into everything that I do like about this cart. And I'm telling you, the more I drive this cart, the more that I, I am thoroughly impressed and uh, I, I'm, I'm, it's, it's really growing on me. I didn't think I was going to like it at first. The more I ride this thing, it just seems like the better, better it gets for me. All right, so some of these things that I do like. Obviously, it is a four-seater. Uh, when we went trail riding, uh, we took a car seat. We have a two-year-old, a four-year-old, six-year-old, 10, uh, an 11-year-old. And so what we done for our two-year-old is we took a car seat and we mounted it up in that seat. I'm not sure exactly how my wife mounted it up, uh, but we got it mounted in there. I think we ended up running the strap over the back as well and mount it to the back rack. So we mounted that car seat in there and we took him out on some pretty rough trails and uh, even before this thing was overheating, and man, did, did we thoroughly enjoy that. So able, the fact that we're able to put four kids, four people in this cart and carry several of our kids, uh, that thoroughly impressed us as well. Another thing is both front seats move forward and back. So if you get a two-seater model, uh, only the driver's seat will move forward and back, but on this one here, uh, the, the passenger seat moves forward and uh, the driver's seat moves forward. Uh, again, you are able to tilt the steering wheel up and down on this. And I tell, you, I tell you what else, something that I noticed as soon as I got in this car, before we ever took it trail riding, and uh, even, even more so on the, on the trails, and uh, we, we've rode it uh, quite a bit as well after, after, we've, after we fixed it. Another thing is just how smooth uh, this cart actually rides. Now again, we took one of the 200 XRXs out, and uh, it's pretty much the same frame as far as up front. It's just shortened and with a 200 motor on it instead of a 300. And man, and the 200's not a bad ride at all, but just the way that this handles, especially for being a longer cart, it, it, is, a, it is really a smooth ride. And I'm telling me and my wife both, uh, Kim both, we were thoroughly impressed and just how smooth uh, the ride is uh, when driving this or riding this. And we've rode it across the field. We've rode it up and down the road. We've rode it on some hills and some trails. And uh, I got it up to, to about 30 or 40, 35 miles an hour on some steep hills and terrain and rocks. And I was 30, thoroughly impressed in how smooth this cart rides. Another thing that I, I, I was, was impressed about uh, was the power. Now, being that it is a four-seater, and uh, we only had uh, three people in it, um, but back here in our empty seat and on our cargo rack, we had it loaded down with gear. And uh, so we had a five-gallon gas can in the floor. We had parts bags that we, have, we loaded up and coolers that we loaded up on this thing. And uh, we had an adult driving it, and all, all the time we had one of the kids in here. And we, I was thoroughly impressed in actually how much power it had uh, to climb hills, uh, even stock and uh, to, to, the power that it has to get up and go, it would still cruise at about 45 miles an hour and it would still climb the hills like it needed to be. Now we can, we can change out the weight systems in here and uh, I would probably recommend doing so. If you know, if you got four adults in here and you're trying to climb hills, uh, I would probably recommend changing the weights out in the clutch. And uh, so you got a lot more low end torque than you do a high end. And of course it'll knock some off of your, uh, it'll knock some off your top end there, your top speed. But uh, we were really impressed with the power that it has. Of course, it is, you know, a 300 versus a 200, the other ones that we've had. Um, but uh, just with the amount of power, with the amount of weight that we were able to put in here, it was good.
Hey y'all, it's Kim with gokartmasters.com. This is Zeke, he's four years old. If you want to check him out riding some of our mini carts, check out our reels and our shorts. We appreciate you watching today. So if you would like, comment, subscribe, and check out our Facebook page. And if you have a 300 cart, would you comment below and tell us what you think about yours?